Okay, uh, hello everyone, welcome back. So now is lecture six. We are going to um, wrap up our talk on solution stoichiometry and then we'll move on um, to a little bit of acid base chemistry uh, and um, uh, redox reactions because they also do happen in uh, solution. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, to um to uh, in the next next week's lecture to finish up our discussion on chapter four okay so lecture six so last time we were going over how to use now molarity in stoichiometry problems so that's a very common way to do chemistry um, where you have a concentration of a certain substance in solution be it water um, uh, maybe methanol or another um, organic solvent perhaps but um, usually in most cases when we do solutions it's usually um, in water. Um, water is the uh, most common solvent. Okay so let's calculate let's do the following um, problem here. Calculate the fall, uh, volume of a 1.50 molar HCl a uh, solution that would consume 25.0 grams of calcium carbonate according to the following balanced uh, equation. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> um, sometimes I would give you the equation, but you should also be able to translate a, um, a word description of a chemical reaction into the proper balanced chemical equation. So we'll practice that as well in discussion um, uh, um, in the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, that definitely will be um, something we'll do in discussion. Okay, <clears throat> okay, so things to note. So for this question, we know the concentration of HCl, which is 1.50 molar. However, we, don't, we can't really do much with this number um, because we don't know the volume, so we can't really calculate the moles. Um, so we know there's a solution of it, but we don't know how much of it there is. So we can't really do anything with the moles. You may say, oh, okay, well, we know there's 1.50 moles per liter, but you don't know how much of that volume you have. So you really can't say how many moles you have right now or that was used in the reaction. So you have to go with the other, uh, other reactant and that is calcium carbonate, okay? So we know the grams of calcium carbonate, therefore we can start by, you know, um, turning that into moles, and then once the moles of calcium carbonate are known, we can use our chemical equation to know, um, um, to determine the moles of HCl, and then therefore once we know that, we can determine how much volume of HCl we need to neutralize or react completely with calcium carbonate. So these reactions um, we, I've been showing you, we call them titrations because um, the two chemical reagents here are an acid and a base and we'll go more over that uh, next, next time about acids and bases. Okay, so here's my setup here. I have calcium carbonate calcium carbonate right here is a solid um, and then in solution here I have um, or in my burette here I have HCl okay all right let's do uh, let's go okay so first let's calculate convert calcium carbonate to moles so we have 25.0 grams Calcium carbonate. All right, and one mole. Calcium carbonate is equal to uh, roughly a hundred point one grams calcium carbonate. So for more masses, um, you see I, I typically use one decimal point. Um, so you want to use at least one. Um, don't use just whole numbers. Um, your calculations might be slightly off to my numbers. So just use one 
Well, if, even if you use more than one decimal, it'll probably be slightly off. But one is probably one decimal place is probably the the um is probably the the least um, number. It's the least number of decimal places you want to put. So at least put one. Okay. All right. So if we do that, um, grams of calcium carbonate cancel, and now we're left with moles. So we get 0 0.250 moles calcium carbonate. So you notice here that I don't need to use Avogadro's number because we're not really concerned with how many molecules there are. Um, we're more concerned with um, how many moles there are because we're trying to go between moles of one substance and moles of another substance. So we're not really concerned with the total number of molecules. So whenever there's a chemical equation involved, um, we usually don't care about Avogadro's number. Um, when there's no chemical equation involved, um, then we tend to be more interested in Avogadro's number if we want to figure out, you know, um, how many molecules um, there are or like, um, you know, um, how much energy per molecule do we need to um, react. Um, how much energy do we need to like break up a mole of something? So that's when we use molecules, the total number of energy, um, so or energy per molecule. Um, so in these types of reaction questions we've been doing, we, we you you will never um, see an instance where you need to use Avogadro's number. Okay. All right, step two, calculate um, the number of moles of HCl consumed in the reaction. Okay, so the space here I left is kind of small, so we'll just have to work with that. Um, zero. Um, when I post the PDF, I'll fix that. So um, it'll be, um, you'll have more space to write, but um, just bear with me here. Calcium carbonate, okay. So we know that um, if we go by our balanced chemical equation, we see we have one mole calcium carbonate. So we're going to put one mole calcium carbonate on the, in the denominator because that's what we're given. And we do not want what we're, uh, what we're given, right? We want what we don't know. And then we see here in HCl, we have two moles. So we're going to put two moles HCl on the top of the fraction. So then moles of calcium carbonate cancel out and we're left with moles of HCl. So remember both of my measurements here have three sig figs. So we're going to put three sig figs in our final answer here. Now if you get a number that's um, really large or has lots of decimal places, you, you may keep a few extra digits if you like. Um, you don't have to. So I won't, when, uh, when, I, um, when, when I grade exams and stuff, or quizzes, um, as long as your answer is within a certain percent of the actual answer, you won't get um, points taken off. Now, if it's outside a certain percent, say like, like, 25% of the answer, then you'll probably get a point off for rounding error or, you know, um, not using enough digits in your measure in like more mass. But um, typically, I won't take off points for rounding error um, if it's within like 5 to 10% of the answer. So here we see that um, this means that in the reaction, um, this amount of moles of HCl was consumed. So we could write HCl consumed. Okay, so that tells us that's how much moles of HCl was used. So using the molarity of HCl, we can figure out now, um, we could determine the volume needed to um, the volume that was used to completely react with calcium carbonate. Okay, so remember we know that molarity equals n over v and then we solve for v and v will equal n over m 
Okay, so we can rewrite this as volume equals 1.50, oops, not that, sorry. 0 0.500 mole HCO over um, 1.50 and we could write here mole over liter, okay? Because that's the units of molarity. And we see your mole will cancel out, so we can say moles HCl over liters, okay? Moles HCl will cancel out, and then we're left with liters in our answer. So our final answer is going to be 0 0.333 liters, okay? So, or we could call this um, 333 liters. Sorry, not liters, um, milliliters. So in this case, we will, um, to answer this question, we would say, we, um, let's not use any pronouns here. Um, 333 milliliters of 1.50 molar HCl is needed. To consume grams of calcium carbonate. Okay, so that's how we do another um, type of stoichiometry problem. Okay. There we go. So now we have, that is now our, that's, that's how you would do that problem. Okay, so if there's any questions, just come ask me or come talk to me. And um, but there are more practice problems in on posted on Canvas, so you could definitely check those out. And you could check out practice problems in the back of each chapter on the in the textbook. And um, if I could get my hands on uh, a physical copy of the book, I will post even more problems for students to use for practice. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next exercise here. All right, so now we get a little bit tricky. Um, so now we can actually um, use these type of calculations to determine um, the identity of a metal. So say you don't know what the metal is in this reaction. You have an unidentified element or metal or atom. In this case, it's a metal atom. So we have a metal here, reacts with hydrochloric acid according to the following equation. So say we have a sample of the metal, right? We need at least some, some, some tidbit of information about the metal or about the element. And so um, say we have 0 0.304 grams of the metal and it reacts um, with this amount of HCl. Um, what is the identity of the metal? So we're going to, we're going to, we're not going to assume the, so we're not going to, uh, our goal is not to find the identity of the metal, but we can. But um, our, our goal is to calculate the molar mass of the metal, okay? If we know that this amount of this, um, this amount of HCl reacts with 0 0.304 grams of the metal, okay? So now like I say here, don't panic. This is a new type of question we haven't seen, but if you go through the steps of what we've been doing in the past two exercises, um, you know, in last lecture and now this lecture, um, you you can you can um, it, it won't be seem so complicated. Okay, so there may seem there's missing information, but let's first summarize what we know. The metal reacts according to the chemical equation. We know we have 0 0.04 grams in the metal, and it takes um, this volume of 0.2 more HCl to consume the metal. So. 
So the mass of the metal doesn't tell us much. So we can't know the molar mass unless we know the moles of the metal that was consumed. So we should start out with HCl. So first let's calculate the moles of, of the solutes HCl in solution. Okay. So we know that molarity, so I'm just going to keep writing this out. So we get the hang of rearranging this equation. Moles equals molarity times volume. So if you know the volume and you know the molarity, you can find the total amount of moles that was added or consumed. So in this case, we get N equals, so molarity here is 0 0.200 molar times 125 mils. But we also have to remember, we have to convert that to liters. So we need to convert this to a proper fraction, one liter over 1,000 milliliters. So milliliters would cancel. And then um, we're, at, we're left with mole, uh, liter, uh, not liters, but moles. So let's maybe rewrite this. Mole over liter. Liter cancels here. There you go. Okay. And if we solve for that in our calculator, we would get 0 0.0125 um, mole HCl. All right, okay. So we just carry that through. We would get 0 0.0125 mole HCl. Uh, sorry, not, not, not 125, my apologies. I think it should be 250, right? Because we're doing 0.2 times, so it's like two times 125. So it should be 0 0.20250, 250. sorry about that. Okay, 0 0.0250 mole HCl. Okay, so that's the first step. Next step, we're going to convert the moles. So we're going to now use the balanced chemical equation to convert the moles of HCl um, into moles of the metal um, that reacted with it. Okay, so go to our, bat let's just rewrite our moles here, 0 0.0250 mole. HCl and we know that if we go back to our balanced chemical equation we have two moles HCl for one mole of the metal reacting so we're going to write the right here so two mole HCl so moles HCl cancel and we get we're left with moles of the metal one mole metal okay so that stands for metal so in this case then we're going to divide our answer by two and we get 0 0.0125 mole um, metal so mole m okay so now we have moles of metal and we have grams of metal now we can determine the molar mass right now next with the moles of metal determined how will we solve for molar mass so um, remember, molar mass, so molar mass is equal to the number of moles, uh, sorry, not good, moles, it's the number of grams of, a, the amount of grams of a substance, right? is the amount of grams of a substance that's equal to um, a mole of the compound. So a mole of, mole of substance is the number of grams of substance, right? Per one mole of that substance. That's the molar mass, okay? So we can equate this to mass over moles. So remember moles is denoted N and we'll have the units of grams per mole, okay?
So that's the molar mass. So if we just plug in what we know. We know mass equals, if we go back up to the beginning of the problem, 0 0.304 gram. And N here equals 0 0.0125 mole. So now we just plug that into our equation, our um, molar mass. So I denote molar mass as mm. So that would equal 0 0.304 grams per 0 0.0125 mole. So if we put that in our calculators, we will get roughly 24.3 grams per mole okay so this is our final answer we leave it as three sig figs because um, of the number of significant figures in our initial calculations so remember um, a lot of the calculations we do is multiplication and division so the, um, the answer should have the least number of sig figs of any of our measurements Right, the same number. Now, if we add it or subtract it, we don't look at sig figs no more. We don't look at the number of sig figs. We looked at the number of decimal places in each of our measurements. Because you know, when you add things, you're you're constantly um, you um, the decimal place has more importance because um, you um, when you add things, um, some some decimal points will carry over while some others will not. So the least accurate one is going to be the one. Um, that has the least number of decimal places. So that, that's how we would um, change our answer in terms of addition of subtraction. So there's like these specific rules, but um, they're there. Um, just, just so we, we have a standard of how we, um, how we, um, of how we uh, treat um, um, actual, you know, numbers we get out of a calculation because a calculator can calculate a pretty accurate number right but um if we have no way of measuring that to that accuracy there's no way we can report it that way so that's why we limit our sig figs and we round okay but anyway 24.3 grams per mole so this is a metal so what kind of metal is this well if we look at our periodic table it's in group two and it's magnesium So don't get this confused with manganese. That is a very common mistake because manganese also has the letters M and G just like magnesium. But um, since the third letter is different, we, we typically say magnesium is MG and then manganese is MN. Um, so that's, that's how you um, differentiate those. Okay. All right. So um, let's end this video here and we'll pick up where we left off in the next one. See you then.